Hello and welcome to Everything to Guppy, the podcast where we talk about every single item, every single enemy, every single everything in the Binding of Isaac. I'm William Hughes, and I'm joined, as always, by a, a creation of an absent-minded professor, Gary Butterfield. It's me. Yeah? Okay, uh, who are you boing. doing? What, what's what's the premise here, man? I'm just, I'm, I'm just Gary Butterfield, except I'm boinging around. Okay, boing. I like this. I like how boingy you are, Gary. I like boing. how I consider you a buoyant person generally. I am, uh, I'm, you know what? I am a buoyant person. Yeah, I, I, I think of you as someone who bounces back easily from adversity. Yeah, and, uh, but bounces very difficultly from the ground. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but the bounces still happen. Would you Bounce say that ID. you get knocked down, you get up again, never going to keep you down? I, only if, depending on how much I've been drinking. You know, night. if I have a whiskey drink, have a vodka drink, mm -hmm. have a cider drink, yep. have a lager drink. And then if I'm thinking about certain times that remind me of other times, uh -huh. then I can bounce back. Gary, I don't have the lyrics to Tub Thumping in front of me. Did you nail them? Yeah. Awesome. I think so. I might have I might have gotten uh, the last two cider yeah. and whiskey I, or cider and lager. If someone's up. going to check that, they need to go They've, fuck themselves. They better be in Chumbawamba. They better be one of the Chumbawamba. Yeah. Join Chumbawamba. Did you know right now you could audition for Primus? Fuck, man. What am I doing here? They have they're op doing open auditions for drummers. You're saying that I could be the drummer on the South Park theme song? Yes. That's amazing. And and you do it live at like TV awards and stuff. Ooh, yeah. Uh, uh, now, or when they do a new South Park special. Yeah. And yeah. and you're, you the only requirement is that uh, you oh, no. bring less. Gary, I was doing great on this until you said to, those to the requirements. Were, yeah. Uh, you have to explore new creative spaces and bring him on a new musical journey. I don't think so. You don't think so? Nope. <laughs> you think you can do that to Les Claypool? I don't think so, Tim. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, but it's worth throwing so your hat in the ring. I mean, you know? I, you know, I, you was in, lose? I was in winter drums uh, in high school. I played the big mm -hmm. bass drum. Maybe that's the move they need to go into. That's yeah. the, the musical territory they need to go to is one big bass drum. Yeah. I wasn't good I at like it. That. I'm not a rhythmic person, really. No, but can you imagine those those bone rattling bass with just one big, you know, thump every once in a while? I think I'm yeah. into it. Oh, man. Going down to South Park and boom, 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 boom. Thump, thump, thump. Beautiful. Thank you, Gary. I do try to be beautiful in my thoughts You're, and deeds. You succeed. Hey, thanks, bud. Uh, yeah. It's Monster Blitz. We're still talking it, about every monster in the Binding of Isaac. We're going to be talking about for a while because when I try to do a bunch of them, Gary gets mad at me. I did get mad. I just want to, I, we've been blazing through these and I don't I want to I go too quickly. Also, uh, I was stalling for the new Isaac update to pop oh, up. There was a new now update we, to the video game. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the items have gotten rebalanced yet again. Uh, a bunch of them in cool, exciting ways. So we'll have to, you know. Yep, redo Go the, those. we got to redo of those items, always. Yeah. And now there's online play. Uh, if I had a friend who played this game, who enjoyed online gaming with other human beings even a little bit, what a joy that would be. Seems unlikely. Yeah. I, when, it, when it comes to Switch, perhaps, if they have a cross-platform, because I have been playing it again on Switch. I just don't play my, my PC save. Fair enough. Of it. The, uh, all my stuff's unlocked on Switch. Um, it's all happening on Switch. Maybe we'll play some at Duckstream. Just just get yeah. the plug in for Duckstream. Uh, you know it's Duckstream season because I've started getting terse emails from my friend Gary. Yeah, what what terse did I do you? <laughs> no, I'm I'm just talking generally oh. about the experience <laughs> of being Gary Butterfield's friend and creative partner in the two weeks before Duckstream. I, I did also to say what terse did I do you? Yeah, what? Which in its own <laughs> way is I a certain you? kind of terse. What terse did I do you? What terse I do? What terse do? Terse? Just um, a, a man who becomes pathologically afraid of being irritated. Yeah, I I I try to be on the lookout for my worst self in advance. Yeah, it's streamer. it's an interesting because Gary and I used to have like we've mostly solved this. The last several duck streams have been basically stress free, basically since we stopped doing twenty four hours straight. Uh, yes, what a quinky dink. Uh, but I, there's still a lingering thing of remembering the inevitable moment when Gary would realize he had, there had been enough will. The, 
every once in a while I hurt your feelings. Sure. It's also every once in a while you hurt my feelings. Uh huh. During Duck Stream. I remember last year uh okay. getting ready to do Family Feud and me being like, Oh, I forgot the the prize out in the card, I'm gonna grab it. And you just on stream being like, Nobody cares about that. Okay. Like do you remember? No, like man. I don't remember it even a little um, bit. Yeah, it, and I was like, shit. Um, okay. Uh, we it's just it's the insanity chamber, you know. I'm trying to prepare for the insanity chamber in advance. We have gotten better at it, but there's always one of these parts where like we we get a little uh, testy. Gary, you know? have you ever considered that if maybe if you regularly streamed, it wouldn't be such a thing? How so? Well, I I guess I always assume that some measure of it is the being on camera aspect of it. Oh, no. Okay. No, no, no. It's it's just do it's being on for 12 hours in a row. Sure. So was like, I guess that aspect is if I regularly streamed, but that microdose would not prepare me for the macrodose that is, you know, 11 hours straight. Have you considered streamed. being on in all of your interactions with other human beings all the time? Because otherwise you get so incredibly fucking bored of other people. Yeah, that's that can be me. You know, I just I, I I've considered it. OK, yeah, it's it, it's a much better way to get through have, a conversation with uh, when you find all other people boring. I've actually considered it a lot. I've spent a lot of time thinking about that specific aspect of somebody and yeah. the uh, <laughs> just really, really thought I probably spent like all told a full day thinking about that. It's probably been 24 hours of me just kind of considering that. Yeah, that's, um, that's good. So it's, Who's it's, the person? Levi. Yeah, he's, he's Levi's always playing that Levi the character. The most on person I know. <laughs> he's nonstop. He's the fucking mask. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, this sounds like I'm being mean. Again, Levi, your your friend and my acquaintance who uh, you do game group with, yes. one of the most reserved people I've ever met in the world. He's great. He's funny. Cur- he's funny he's and smart, funny. but he is incredibly dry and reserved. He's pretty reserved. Uh, pod save the waking sands. Sure. Shout out to the, uh, do the final fantasy 14 podcast that he does that surprised me. Uh, they got very into that game. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a personal betrayal. Yeah. That game has lore. Yeah. It does have lore. You know? Yeah. And his, uh, his ex, uh, current friend X was, got him into it. So I get it. <laughs> Thank you for tracking that. Exactly. Like I, I knew exact patient zero when my friend got way into the anime MMO. Sure. But uh, like, when the did they break up? Ah, oh, good, good question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, quite a while ago, but I can't remember okay. the time. This year has been a thousand years. Like it doesn't, uh, time. I liked you for a thousand years. A Aww. thousand years. Scott Pilgrim. Yep. Yeah. Um, Hey, that, uh, if music. I know an indie song, it's cause it was in a movie soundtrack. Yeah. Yeah, weirdly enough, not as much in that band. Uh, Pear Plumtree was not in that soundtrack as much as I thought they would be. Yeah, I think uh, uh, I think probably Edgar Wright didn't like them that much, but still figured yeah. they had to put that song in there. He was way more into Beck. God, that's a good um, fucking soundtrack, though. I, I don't like that. I, the, I've said this before. I don't think the songs sound like they did in my head. I, I'm not talking about Sex for a I'm not talking about Sex Oh, okay, gotcha. I'm just talking about yeah, yeah, the generally the, good. the soundtrack. Yes, 100%. Agreed. And the soundtrack to the beat em up, the Mama Gucci uh, soundtrack's good. Gary, uh, real C plus pronunciation there, man. Yeah, I'm a Mama Gucci? Uh, Anamana Gucci. Okay, what did I say? I'm a Mama Gucci. <laughs> I know I was talking about a brand of handbag. Oh, okay. <laughs> for mommies. The changing the subject. Yeah, the handbag was, for mommies. I was talking about a mommy handbag. Where um, she keeps the wipe for my bum thing. bum. Yeah, it's very blue velvet. Baby need blue velvet. <laughs> Baby do need um, blue velvet. <laughs> Baby need blue velvet. Mr. Bean dances. Baby need blue velvet. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Gary, I'd forgotten about Mr. Bean dances. <laughs> yeah. I uh, No, not me. God, I that's still a beautiful time. metaphor for the fact we're all going to die. It is. It, it, it was inevitable. <laughs> There's nothing you can do. Mr. Bean's going to dance. Yep. It is. Uh, we're on the dance train to Bean Town. Uh, and baby want blue velvet. Uh, Gary, uh, we're doing uh, the first monster we're doing today is blubber, the much teased ah, blubber. Yes, uh, a word for whale fat. Yeah, uh, hangs out with my old friend Ambergris. 
Yeah, uh, the perfume slime. Precious hamburgers. That's a Futurama joke for everybody. Yeah. That's from the episode where uh, I think Kiff gets covered in ambergris, and then they have Roseanne define it as a talking dictionary. And when she says precious, when someone says precious ambergris, he goes, precious hamburgers. And I've never Mm. forgotten it. Yeah, it's stuck in the man, in the old mind. Yep. T- this morning, I was driving my wife to work at six thirty in the morning, uh, and my brain randomly started spitting out the lyrics from the Buffy the Vampire Slayer musical episode. So I'm not doing okay. Is what I. Yeah, you're my, tired. Yeah, I'm tired. When when did you go to bed? One thirty. Mm, I'm not a real not sleep. I'm not a I'm not a sleepy man. A sleeper man. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not a person who sleeps. I guess is what I should say. It's interesting the way that depression uh, or various brain things can can impact. Because like, <laughs> keep I, walking back. Keep walking back. No, no, no. Well, I just I don't want to be loudly corrected about how you're not depressed. I'm um, not the uh, well the uh, the way I when I'm doing in my brain, mm-hmm. uh, all I want is sleep, and it just you you just you're built different. Yeah, uh, so my entire management of my, like, I I would argue that I am no longer, like, I definitely have depression and I definitely have anxiety, but Mm -hmm. I have spent my life creating systems where those two things don't matter because of a pretty aggressive campaign of relentless thought management through distraction. Okay. Okay. And you can't do that while you're sleeping. It's that that gulf between turning off the phone and going to sleep is the moment where thoughts can like they're all like lined up behind the door just waiting to get in. Like right at the head of the vanguard is always the knowledge of my own death. Sure. But there's a lot of guys in there. There's people I've let down. There's uh, that time in college where I was. Talk. I was an opinions editor, and one of our columnists, she was doing some charity organization where they were doing a uh, dating auction. You know, like the dating auctions like you see in movies. Sure. And she was, like, talking to our editor-in-chief, who was hot as fuck, about how he should do that. And I was like, oh, we could get a column out of that. Maybe I could do it, too. And neither of them said fucking anything. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, do you, yeah, do you understand that that thought is always in here, just waiting for me to turn off an episode of The Simpsons so I could just raise a hand can, and go, still here, bud, you still said can, that, and they still didn't can, say anything. Can I tell you how powerful that anecdote was? Yeah. Here's the joke I had loaded up uh-huh. when I was doing the guppy thing of like half listening and half yeah. Being like, how am I going to gup this up next? I was going to say, and who could forget that time you just loudly told the stream that nobody cared about the reward I brought for my game show I worked really hard on. Sure. I was going to joke about that. Uh, and I lost it completely Yeah, from that. Like, that knocked me down. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. By the it's, way, it's I okay. was very excited to play Family Feud. No, just I didn't think anyone cared about the prize. They just wanted to see the Family Feud game happen. Well, no, but the, the prize was part of the joke. Okay. Because the prize was that little statue. Yes. You know, it was all part of a presentation. And I just had to walk out to the car. Yeah. It wasn't, like, hard to get to. Kind of I was, my feelings a bit, but then we uh, we worked it out. But Gary, also, I was just so excited to play the game. I the, I the, the game was the prize for me. I understand that it wasn't born of malice. Still, kind of hurt my feelings. A I bit. was so excited to do the thing you had made because uh, I love mm-hmm. you so much. Well, Gwen got really excited for the prize. Gwen has that thing up in her office. The who do you who wants it win or whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, it's a, God, doing things for more than just man, you. Now I'm remembering how fucking bad the answers to that were. You did get real mad. Uh, this year, there's a game show, and I, it won't be like that. I think so. it was like things associated with Final Fantasies. I think I said fucking chocobos and got nothing. Yeah, uh, it was. It was that was also a huge pain uh, parsing those out because no matter how many times you say don't no jokes, yeah, uh, people still see any empty text box as an opportunity to try to be funny. Yeah, just a chance to do a little bit of just have a little bit of fun with uh, yeah. just be on the same level as at the as, cost of my fun. You know, yeah. The uh, to get to give me a lot of work in exchange for a little bit of fun, uh, yeah. Uh, this, oh, the uh, no, 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 not uh, Blubber. Right? No, okay. else I was gonna say. Um, I'm also I have the exact same thought thing. You uh-huh. do. the the period between putting down my iPad or putting down my my phone and going to sleep is awful, 
And I do that, but I fight it with drugs. Sure. Um, either, you know, a marijuana edible or a sleep drug. And then that just stops me from being able to do it. I don't like drugs because I can yes. turn off TV and then TV is done. There is no, unless I'm like taking heroin and then taking one of those drugs that turns off the heroin, mm-hmm. which like seems Narcon? like a, a trick. Yeah. Narcon. Yeah. It seems like, which seems like a tricky tightrope to walk. It, it seems like a, a wonderful invention. Yeah. Oh no. It's great. I, mean, I wish I had it for more things. I would take it for so many fucking things. Yeah. Sometimes like I take a Tylenol and I wish I hadn't. I should be able to take Narcon for Tylenol and just be like, nah. Why, why, do, you, why do you wish you hadn't taken the Tylenol? No, i just joking. Okay. Uh, the, uh, yeah. I was trying to think of the most innocuous drug. Sure. Um, the, uh, yeah, I, I turn it off by going to sleep. Yeah. That, I mean, that makes yeah. sense. But what if I, there's another video game I need to play? Yeah. Then, then you're fucked. Even though sometimes then you just play the game and get real bad at it. If you're, if you're high. Uh, a little bit. I can't. Abide, kind of I can't abide that. Yeah, I, I understand. Have, I have to have excellence at all times. Yeah, it doesn't. It isn't a time to be excellent. I'll tell you that much. Uh, I'm not at my best when I'm going to sleep at ten o'clock because I'm depressed and forcing my body to do it, even though I'm not tired. Oh, poor um, Bubbo. Yeah. I'm okay. I'm o- I'm all right. I'm all right. And don't nobody worry about me. I've been. Uh, I've been watching The Simpsons. You know, I've never done a Simpsons rewatch. Oh, yeah. I, uh, where, yeah. Season four. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, no, like real classic episodes. It's already getting kind of cartoonish, mm-hmm. uh, in a way that, uh, I feel mixed about, uh, cause season two and three, it got that heart. Yeah. It does give up the heart. Yeah. Um, and, and they, they do have a mix for a while. Mm-hmm. Like I don't, I don't like season two that much, um, or season one, but I think no, season, season three one's one very that, bad. Season one's extremely yeah. bad. Uh, I want there to be a better ratio of yeah. jokes. Like I primarily want to laugh while watching the Simpsons. Uh, what is it? Which season is uh, Homer at the bat? And that's that season three. three. That's, that's, that's right in the heart of season three. That's that's a really good mix of has a little bit of heart and wholesomeness and is still very funny. Yeah. You know, it's got King Griffey yeah. Jr. With the giant head. Yeah. And, and Marge going, that man wants to hit the ball yeah. and he does. And everyone's happy. And he runs off in that direction. This man would like to hit the ball too, like Marge just describing baseball. Yeah, uh, I, I am noticing something about the show that I did not notice in my previous watches, though. Hmm. Uh, every episode, they actually they change what Bart writes on the chalkboard. No. No, seriously. He, he always says, "I'm an underachiever, and I'm proud of it." Okay, he did that in the first episode, but if you actually if you don't hit skip intro and you check it, he writes like a different thing each episode. It's wild. It's like an Easter egg. Yeah. Okay. I wonder why this wasn't brought up on Reddit. Like why the Reddit detectives didn't find this because it, it I, seems because like everyone they, hits skip intro. Oh, it seems like our Simpsons. Those would be the kind of sickos who wouldn't, you know, uh, you've, but, but they've, they're the ones who've seen the intro the most number of times. That is true. That is true. Yeah. Well, shit, I should go back and find all those. Oh, that's going to be a pain. I'll, I'll go to the wiki and read the different jokes. Okay. I don't it's know. I, again, I, I do not know if this is on the wiki. Man, you could you could become a wiki star. You could become I, a fandom superstar. I, could, I mean, I could, but I'm trying to live a you know a more self actualized life here. You know. Yeah, yeah. Also more, uh, you know, more spiritual than updating wikis. I'm actually trying to be less spiritual. I'm trying to be like pure flesh, just more material. Moving, yeah, just moving through space as a wad of flesh, not unlike the enemy blubber in the binding of Isaac walks right aimlessly and randomly spews a cluster of blood shots in all directions. Uh, if and you, this is actually a very fun thing about the three enemies. The enemy before this was fat sack. Yep. There is a chance when you kill fat sack that the head will pop off. And then that's blubber, which is a big white fat body with no head. And then when you kill this one, it has a chance to turn into a half sack, which is, <laughs> Half of the torso is blown off, and now there's just spine sticking up. It's a huge spine, too. One yeah. of the things I think about Half Sack, which is the next monster, is that uh, that joke is a big thing for, you know, comedians in the 90s. When people would say they you know weren't fat, they just had big bones. Mm-hmm. And then comedians would be like, I've never seen a fat skeleton. I'm Ricky Gervais. Uh, this is a fat skeleton. Look it's, how thick that spine is. Yeah, those are some thick bones. That's lo- ludicrous. Like, you wouldn't be able to do anything if you had bones like that. Yeah, half sack. Um, all it does is wander around and leave creep and like block shots for other stuff. It's just like, oh shit, you thought the enemy was dead, but it's still lingering on. Yeah, 
and th this class of enemy can be a little bit tanky anyway yeah. for things that appear on the first floor. Uh, so it can be a pain. Uh, now that I'm doing greed mode streaks again, uh, I'm reminded of them. You know, so yeah, was doing them. Quit. I'm yeah. back. Welcome back, Gary. Welcome back to the community. Thanks. Welcome back. Your uh, dreams were your ticket out. out. Cotter time. He's Let's read about the kids who did crimes. The Welcome Back Cotter comics again. Oh, yeah. Famously, oh, the least funny thing we've ever done on this show. <laughs> the uh, Cotter. Ooh. You doing a little, uh, was that a little Barbarino? Cotter. You, uh, Cotter. It's him as a Pokemon. You a Horseshack man? You know, I'm not a anything Welcome Back Cotter man. You don't like uh, If I was a, I would be a Squiggy. You know, uh, actor from David Laverne Landers, Shirley. Squiggy, David Landers uh, yeah. from Laverne and Shirley. Isn't it the same character? Isn't it across? Isn't it one of those shared universe things? It's not, man. Like Laverne. I don't know, man. Used to teach at the school. It's no? really not. No. You, and you oh. know, it's not. You're just trying to make me angry. I thought that Michael McKeon and Squiggy were also Lenny. in Welcome Michael Back. Michael McKeon was Lenny. Lenny. We're also in Welcome Back Cotter. Is there no, is there no connection between there's actors no, or characters? There's no connection. There. What? I, I believe Welcome Back Cotter is not has nothing to do with the Gary Marshall verse. I thought a Squiggy was a, a Horshack. No, because like they're played by different actors name, with different names, name. slightly similar voices. I don't think I realized they were different actors. Yeah, no. So. Uh Horshack was played by Ron. Ah, damn, I can't pull Horshack's name. My favorite joke I... about that can I Gary, can I tell you? I think I might have mentioned this on the show before, but it's such a good joke. Um mm -hmm. So in Scream, okay. right? The film Scream. You're familiar with the film yes. Scream with Ghostface. I've never seen it, but I'm familiar with it. There's two, it. there's two Matthew Lillards. Sure. It. Yeah, that's the big twist at the end. That's the twist. They got double Lillards. Uh, sure. They got uh, SLC Punk and Shaggy. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and the guy from, uh, from Wing Commander. Sure. That's in the second one. Yeah. Uh, they should have just cast Tom Wilson. Stop asking them the questions. Um. Gary, that's a fun joke about the fact that Matthew Lillard oh, yeah. is playing the character played by Tom Wilson in the Wing Commander games. Tom Wilson has the song about not being asked about being Biff. Stop asking the questions. Yes. Uh, somebody wrote in uh, about our Toonstruck episode uh -huh. saying they went to a convention where Christopher Lloyd and uh, Tom Wilson were there. Yeah. And Christopher Lloyd was very old and miserable. Yeah. And everyone was directing all their questions to him and he clearly didn't care. Mm -hmm. And the moderator kept trying to direct people to Tom Wilson being like, Tom loves to talk. He loves to answer questions. He has his guitar with him. And people just weren't asking Tom Wilson questions. It made me real sad. I would ask Tom Wilson some questions. He was uh, on. Uh, he was really good on Legends of Tomorrow. He's, uh, I believe it. Like, he's great. And yeah. he's also really charismatic. And him just kind of being like, yeah, I'm famous for this one thing. Mm -hmm. Fuck it. That's great. Uh, I really respect it. Yeah, I would love to. And it's also just sad to think of the elder abuse that was probably happening to Christopher Lloyd. Christopher Lloyd doesn't ever seem like he's having a really good time. No. He's a very sad man. Um, yeah. So anyway, uh, in Scream. Oh, yeah. You've never seen Scream. Uh, Scream's never funny. Scream. You didn't enjoy Scream. Um, I was just the wrong age for it. But You were like... 16? Okay. It, when did it come out? 1999? I feel like it's a little earlier. I feel like it's, uh, we can find this out quite easily. Uh, Scream 1 came out in 96. Okay. I was 16. That's actually the exact perfect age to see Scream. That is a good, a good yeah. age to see Scream. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Yeah. That, op that one. The opening you know, 15 minutes of that is legendary for good reason. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I'm not against it. I should put it on unfilmable. I've never seen it. I'd like the, an excuse to see Scream. Scream. The important thing, and by important I mean it uh, explains this bit of trivia that I find amusing, is that in Scream, the slightly suspicious high school principal is played by Mr. Henry L Winkler, a.k.a. Okay. The Fonz. The Fonz. Yes. So in Scary Movie, they cast David Landers, who played Squiggy, as the principal. That is pretty funny. A, a joke just for me. Yeah, that is, that is pretty good. Yeah. yeah I, don't, I don't mind that. Um, yeah, squiggies. Gary, uh, I, I have not just one but two bits prepared for today. Okay. Because uh, I was yeah. I was spending some time this morning at the old Carl's Jr. eating my Monster Biscuit. Uh, and a Monster if, Biscuit. Because I'm on the... God, Gary. And they put... This Carl's Jr. isn't my usual Carl's Jr. They put some sort of spicy in there. 
Mm. I didn't love that. I don't yeah, need. Not I don't need spicy. Though. spicy. Yeah, I've never had the monster biscuit. I live by a Carl's Jr. Now. Uh, it's and, and, yeah. I can't uh, in not, good conscience, mm. given that I am usually privy to your various health issues. I can't in good conscience recommend you add the monster biscuit to your life. It does have, I believe, two kinds of cheese and three kinds of meat on it. That's more than I want. It's I, I it's more than you should certainly. Yeah, yeah, I I, I, I couldn't. Uh, couldn't be me. But anyway, you're eating your uh, biscuit. So, and that does make my brain think. I have, do you want to, do you want to help me or do you want to hurt each other? I, I'd rather help you. Right. I'm feeling, we, we've had a week off. Okay. You know? I, we're uh, doing both, things. but, but. Yeah. No, no, I know. I, I'll take this one first to like lube it up. So Gary, you know how you won't do an actual play podcast with me, even though I've asked like a hundred times? There are parts of that that are close to true. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, I, I know what you mean by that slander. Yes. <laughs> so I was thinking about how to do a let's how to do an actual play podcast with just me because no one will do one with me. Um, okay. Choose your illusion three. See, I, I it can't be. That's what I'm trying to think. How can I DM? an actual play for myself where I play multiple characters. I did this joke a long time ago. Like I called it like running on empty or something. I can't remember or shadow running on empty. I don't know uh, where it was just me playing all the characters. Mm-hmm. But, like a one man show. Yeah. But I'm, tr- I, I was genuinely trying to think the other day about how to make it work. Cause I think you have to do something where like, there has to be a heavy randomness component to how the characters behave. Okay. Like I have to have like, because it it can't fall into the thing where I as the DM am setting things up for my characters to succeed, right? Well, then you're just writing a fiction. Exactly. So yeah. I need something where the characters have strong motivations. Like the barbarian has to fuck shit up, and like I roll a die or something. Yes. Uh, to determine what they do, so you have some interparty tension. Yeah, and yourself. also just like. Things go wrong all the time. Yes. Well, I mean, things would go wrong if you were rolling dice for success as well. Yeah. But this is more fun because you'd have characters do suboptimal things. Yes. And, and, on a, and you know, as, as someone who listens to a couple of actual play podcasts, it's always better when the characters are fucking up, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, th- that, is the, that is one of the primary joys of tabletop gaming. It drove me fucking uh, is nuts your listening to the Adventure Zone recently. Uh, the The good season that just wrapped up was okay. was them fighting Dracula, and it was very funny and very good. But at the end, one of the characters got mind controlled by Dracula. Okay, uh, and I am of the firm belief that if you are playing a tabletop game and your character gets charmed, you should mm-hmm. do nothing to try to defy the charm. You should do to the maximum of your effort exactly what whoever is charming you wants you to do yeah because yeah, yeah. that's great yeah it's real fun it's it's the whole point it's why charming is fun yeah and that uh it's not fun if you're just like you're otherwise you get a million variations of resist it you're somewhere in there i know or even you know, just bullshit. like oh i'm following the letter of the command but i don't really want to f- no like the fucking dynamite yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. anyway uh, and they didn't do this no, and I won't even say what it was. Justin, it was Justin. Was it the trickster? Oh, um, it was Justin. Damn it, Justin. Okay, so you're you're thinking of a way to do this, yeah, the solo thing with random. I I think this is a fun idea. Uh, you've got upwards of three voices, so you've got a party. Okay, um, that did hurt my feelings a little. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, is it so, upwards of? Yeah, no, true, true, <laughs> true. The, yeah, that could uh, be any number of voices. I'm thinking because I'm often thinking about it. I'm thinking blades would be a good match for this because sure. blades, you can, you can set up problems very easily yes. in that system. Yes. And when things go wrong, it's fun. Yeah. And, and also fun. like the, the positioning system in that makes it very easy for me to make it hard on myself. Yes. Agreed. Uh, so it's just a matter of like how to like set up, like, I don't know if it's like each character has a table of their worst impulses or something. And I have to like roll against them all the time. I don't know. Yeah, that's a good question. If if this were a produced product, yeah. you would have like character dies. Like each yeah. individual character would have a die that would, would function. Like you'd roll two dice, one for success and one for like posture. 
Ooh, yeah. of the success. And then you just compare those two dice. It'd be like a rules light kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and you could do that through tables. Um, Cause the key thing would be, I would, I have to be able to surprise myself yes. while doing it. And a dice is rough for that because then you're a table. Cause if you see everything on the table, yeah. um, you know, the bounding box of it, it's almost like there's a reason why these happen with other people. Yeah. Well, other people have friends. Uh, and yeah. are tolerable to other human or beings. Or like to go to sleep at 10 o'clock because they're sad. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know, there's, there's two different kinds of friends. Yeah, if I had some access them, to Midnight Gary, we'd be doing this kind of thing all yeah. the time. So Some of them, uh, a Gary that doesn't sleep 11 hours a day, yeah. would have a lot more time for this kind of thing. <laughs> um, the uh, uh, Yeah, I'm trying to think of a way to do it. it with You could play it by yourself. Designing it from the ground up would be difficult. I mean, I think if you had somebody else design it and do what you'd want is the thing like the card thing you made for me for the dungeon where like it's literally a surprise. You've never written the thing. Yeah. You know, like you've never seen it before. Um, You just get to find out like, oh, this character is like deathly afraid of water, you know, seconds before. Oh, man, I could have the audience write them. Yeah, that's a real fun idea. That's actually shit, Gary. That's actually a good idea. Yeah, it's a really good idea. Do a Google form, have people submit it. Yeah. Uh, and then just, uh, you know, and do one for each character, mm-hmm. you know, so there's a little bit of a bounding box. So you don't get too low random, you know, like you don't want the barbarian like thinks he, he you know, because again, an empty text box will be somebody's sure, opportunity to, you know, and some of those will be fun, but then some will be like, you know, won't make for dramatic situations. We'll just be like, thinks that they're, you know, a, a bunny. Like it will be silly shit like that, I think. So you want to weed that out. Do I take this to Cole or do you <laughs> Does that to go through me? Yeah. Uh, how do you, I I how do we get this on the network? Uh well you would record it. Okay. On spec, you, I guess. Yeah, yeah, you gotta have some up yeah. Uh, okay. cause it's, you gotta do, get, have some stuff to put out Okay. Uh, there. I would help in this scenario. Yeah. I would curate a, a, a Google doc of yeah. it in terms of like, you could put out the call for everything, but I could shorten it of things that are obvious trolls. Oh, sure. And look it over, maybe punch it up a little bit. And That'd then we add it to the network now. Well, you'd record a couple episodes. Okay. Uh, on that'd be some kind of spec. On spec. The uh, most podcasting, unpaid. Mm. Um, mm. To almost all of it. Mm. But you would get uh, that percentage of downloads. I get. You know? Because I, I, get, I get some money for this show. Yeah. Due to my largesse. The, um, yeah. In, in, in this scenario, mm-hmm. uh, you would probably get more money if it acquired an audience. Oh, you know, if people like is, the that, show. is that like a thing? That is a thing. It's oh. based on downloads, brother. Yeah. Gotta get those downloads. Can yeah. I just download it a bunch? Shit. Gary, can I, I do it? Ex- I think, Gary, I think maybe you can. <laughs> I think you could probably download Guppy a bunch of times. I was just and saying, probably Gary, artificially increase your share. <laughs> Gary, can you put aside the part of you that doesn't like it when I openly speculate about how to rob you? Yeah, the uh, I don't. I'm I'm enjoying myself. Yeah. Okay. The, good. That part's put aside. Can I do a month where I just download a, the Guppy episodes a hundred times every day and just see? I, I would love it. I got to do the math on that. I, <laughs> it, would, it would be very funny if eventually, like, you'd almost have to automate a bot to do it. Yeah. <laughs> like you'd, yeah, you'd have no, like a server farm course, yeah. to download Guppy, and like all of a sudden Guppy is the most downloaded show on the network. Yeah. And yet none of the people are patronizing. Uh, and I it? wouldn't do it for a second month. No, I, it'd just be one month of just a, a big, a little boost. I, the idea you know of Cole ethical... having that panic attack is actually it's... so good for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he would be like, hey man, just just so you know, Guppy's doing really well. Uh-huh. I'm like, Weird. yeah, like why, huh? We haven't done anything different. Yeah. The same old bullshit. Well, I did one uh, thing different. That's true. <laughs> I set uh, up a bot farm. <laughs> there's, a, there's a bot farm. The, um, that is very funny. Uh, that'd be a good prank on Cole. That would be a good prank on Cole and a good prank on my bank account. It'd be a yeah a prank account. <laughs> good, good prank uh, on my car payment. The bank prank. Uh, if, uh, that continued. 
mm-hmm. as a thing. Mm-hmm. Eventually, I'd probably want to benefit from it in some yeah, way. Yeah, I'd probably want to wet your beak a little bit, maybe. Yeah, I'd probably wet, wet my beak a little bit. I'd probably want it on the grift um, a little bit in exchange for keeping it quiet. Sure. Uh, and everybody who's listening would have to do that. Just yeah, to, but let, wet money. their beaks just a little. Yeah, I mean, just but just mostly stay quiet. Yeah. And quiet those fucking beaks. Um, the uh, I don't need to hear any goddamn squawking for any little shits uh, when we do this grift. <laughs> I, I, I don't, a lot I think of people don't podcast work. their grifts. No, no, no. It's a, it's something you do when you, when you're confident your audience is cool. Our audience you know? is cool, which I keep trying cool. to remind you as you get more and more anxious as duck stream approaches. <laughs> the, uh, I don't like being on display and being tortured Yeah, I know. about something. It just, it, I don't like it. I used to be okay with it. Now I don't like it. We, we did have a, a, an interpersonal moment that I will share where you were like a little worried about a thing. And I was like, you can just tell them to go fuck themselves and I, they'll like it. I know I'm not used to. Uh, and then, then, then when you were like, yeah, what, what did you say in response to that? It was like, uh, something, something about, uh, the guppy audience and, Oh, something about mixing up the, the performance, Gary, if anyone does troll me, they're trolling character, Gary, not real Gary. Yeah. And I had a moment of being like, I'm really bad at separating those two things. Uh, and then I added it to the hours of me cons- uh, considering what it would be like to always act in a character because I was, other people made me bored. Yeah. Uh, that you, just have be to, specified. you just have to treat life as theater, man. Although, you know, give me a Sam Shepard play any day, right? Yeah. Well, you know what? Speaking truth with that shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Undeniably dorky thing to say. <laughs> Still Is true. It? Is it yeah. a thing? Okay. <laughs> I did. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, jokes for nobody. <laughs> it's um, for me. It's for me. Yeah, it's, and it's the one guppy listener who said that in the guppy He's slack called out. And I yeah. had to resist the urge to roast them alive for saying it. <laughs> it was a dorky thing to say, even if they were cooking with that. <laughs> yeah. Um, the yeah, even if correct. Uh, yeah, I don't. Uh, the the thing we were nervous Come about to the is the guppy slack. To, I will microaggress you so fucking hard on air. Yeah, like, later <laughs> I will consider it and let it build up overnight. <laughs> yeah. Um, the uh, I was just worried a bunch of people were going to troll me with musical songs during the karaoke section. Yeah, we can just say no to those. They, it, we can I just know. say pick a different one. Assholes. I, I'm I, being honest. I, I appreciate your support. Yeah. With that, I was just feeling uh, anxious about it. I'm already anxious. I'm really behind on work. I'm having a lot of anxiety stuff. I had an anxiety reaction. Uh, medically that was kind of scary. Mm-hmm. Um, I am experiencing a lot of anxiety right now. And, uh, you know, so things that are probably not that big a deal get scary. Gary, uh, into that know? environment, can I enter and in, inject a new energy? Please. It's the everything to guppy character showcase. Oh, Hey, uh, Gary, I have written down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 <laughs> characters. <laughs> Okay. That I wrote down while sitting in my booth at Carl's Jr. and trying not to identify what the smells were. Mm-hmm. Uh, most of them Those weren't food. Eat. A couple were. Mm-hmm. And I just wrote down 16 characters uh, for us to kind of just go back and forth with. Yeah. Lay it on me. I, give are we, me a are we doing like a, a single me, a single statement or are we doing like a... Live in a we, can live, we got about 20 minutes left in the episode. We can live in these guys for at least a minute. Live in these guys for a, for a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you're marking down which ones have already been picked? I will do my best, yes. Okay. Uh, give me 11. Okay, 11 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I didn't number that. I'm sorry. Oh, it's Harlan off. Ellison parody. Okay. I, and I had to put parody on there because I saw J. Michael Straczynski was getting very mad that some somebody had created a Harlan Ellison bot on, like, character AI or whatever because mm. uh, he runs the Harlan Ellison estate, I guess. He was like, mm-hmm. this is copyright infringement of his. This ain't good. So this one's a parody. We're not going to get in trouble with J. Michael Strzokzynski. Exactly. And be able to meet of... the person behind Rising Stars. Is that uh, is that one of his? That's a comic. Yeah. Okay. Babylon 5. Yeah, he's got a comic. It, uh, some of the worst uh, Spider-Man shit. Pretty bad. He Although he disavowed some of that. Yeah, he did He did some good. Like, he's, he's a frustrating writer. Anywho. Uh, these kids today. Uh, their, their sci-fi is bullshit. Uh, they don't Hate. know anything about humanity. Hate is oh. what I'm feeling towards you right now. So yeah. much hate that you could build a mountain from it. 
Hmm, a single engram of hate, huh? You're all yeah. sucking on that old glass teat. I'm going to go out to the city and do crimes and hang out with poor people and turn it into a novel that no one read. And I'm going to do no shit. A series of cameos on the Scooby-Doo cartoon from like the 2010s. Yes. <laughs> Where <laughs> I am a character in Scooby-Doo as myself. Mm, the true Phoenix without ashes has arrived. And seen really good Harlan yeah. Ellison. Glad it got a lot. Thanks. We forgot to get mad at Gene Roddenberry. Yes. Uh, I was trying to be mad in general, but I, yeah. I couldn't remember any of his specific targets. I have there an, so many of them. I have an enormous amount of affection for Harlan Ellison. I oh, me, me too. He's such a dick. Yeah. No. Uh, but he's, he's actually good. Like I got a bunch of Harlan Ellison. Great writer. I great critic too. Uh, I, I dropped yeah. in a reference there to the glass teat, which is the collection of his TV writing. Uh, mm-hmm. Really good. As long as you don't mind that he's always cranky and very mad at uh, Gene Roddenberry. And the uh, reference I brought into Mean Streets or whatever, mm-hmm. I think it's called that, where he did like just kind of become a poverty tourist yeah. in uh, for a while and wrote a bunch of short stories about like cool 70s New York junkies and shit, like cool New York scum, like the, the apartment that uh, that Dean stays in in uh, yeah. Venture Brothers, like that kind of thing. Um, yeah, good. Uh, okay. Uh, let's do 15. Okay. And keep in mind, I'm deleting the numbers. So now there's 15 total. Uh, <laughs> Why are you doing it that way? Well, Why uh, would you number them? <laughs> I, okay, okay. I got to put in. It's the, so much more difficult sh- to like oh, remember the running total and which I, numbers correspond to where. I, now. I'm, okay. Then number 15 <laughs> is Sherwin Williams. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, I've invented mauve, and this is uh, this is my sentient bucket of pain. What's that, boy? No, I don't think we will be going to Seattle this weekend. They've had uh-huh. some sort of... No, they had some sort of Arctic bomb or something. It froze the whole city <laughs> solid and... Cr- oh, but it cracked all the paint. No, we're going to get dinner tonight with William Som- Sonoma. And scene. It's surprisingly hard to do intonations in that mm-hmm. mouth sound. I was trying to go, oh. Yeah. Uh, I was trying to do like perky and, and, you know, boy in his blob kind of thing. And it's difficult. Despite what all the tags on my searches suggest, it's hard to be both perky and wet. It is hard to be perky and wet. The, uh, but when it happens, it is hard mm-hmm. to be perky and wet. Uh, let's do three. Three is just Tucker. Hey, guys. Hi there, everybody. What's up, we're Tucker. Uh, we're, I'm Tucker, and this show. is my brother, Tucker. Welcome to the show. Hey. Uh, I'm from Queensland. You wouldn't think so, but I've worked hard to get rid of my accent. Hey, Tucker, how much snake you eat today? Lots of snake. Oh, Three. I eaten rattler or boa lately? I like to get a little mix. Oh. Uh, I, get a, I do hybrids. That's great. I've been eating garter snakes for days. Mm, they're, they're snackable. Yeah, yeah. Deep fry them and then just let them go straight down the old slide gully works. Slide down the gully works and then slide on out. And if I can get a little bit of that, you ever, uh, you ever get some of that venom in there? That garter snake venom? Mm-hmm. Mm. Picante. Picante. And scene. As that we say in Australia. And scene. All right. Yeah, snake eating brothers. Yeah, so far it's not going well the bit. You know, it's going to, like, we're only three in. I know. Which is a little bit Three worrying. seems like how long it should have taken to get to one laugh. Um, we, uh, but we didn't, it's okay. We can break this up. Here's what we do. We do the guppy thing where you break this up over multiple episodes. No, nope, we're doing all of them, this one. No, no, no. We do one more. Nope. And then we have this month. Nope. It's special month. Nope. Christmas. Nope. Christ. Give me another, give me another number, buddy. <sighs> Um, I'm going to say one. The Vanished Child. <laughs> Gary, can I give, can I, can I give you a note? Yeah. That's for me too. Okay. <laughs> I don't think we can both be the character. I think we have to go back and forth. 
You know, that does make a lot of sense. I, in the first one, I was doing the character and you did join in. If you play the tape. <laughs> yeah. Gary? So I did not expect you to join in actually during that. Assigned. That's how, I, that's how I thought it was going to work because it's how you explained it. But then when I did the character, you immediately jumped in. <laughs> I just wanted to be Harlan Ellison too. I know. I get I'm it. We didn't, sorry. we didn't discuss, we didn't I'm negotiate sorry. who was going to be able to be who. Well, I've been the vanished child. Okay. Uh, Well, that'll free up my afternoons. And scene. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> you're you're the, the present parent. Yeah, uh, give me All another right, number, so, buddy. So you, you do this one. Okay. Uh, nine. Uh, okay, this is a two-person one. Oh, okay. Uh, this is the hosts of Gautier Today. <laughs> okay. I'm just someone that you used to know. And... I'm another song by Gautier. Barry, have you once again not looked up a second Gautier song? I know. No, I haven't done it yet. It's Bear, been a busy week. Bear, what have you been? What's been so busy? I was looking up Blues Traveler songs. You have to stop looking up Blues Traveler songs when we're doing. Barry, I've been up to three. Okay. Well, but but four is their big album. <laughs> the <end> scene. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <sighs> Turned into less about Gautier and more the Blues Traveler minute. I only knew one thing about Gautier. Yeah, we both did, Sorry. and I got it there first. <laughs> I know you did. You scooped me. You scooped me good. I was trying to bring it back into Blues Traveler because I know you know about Blues Traveler. I do know a little but... bit more about Blues Traveler. Gary, give me another number. Yeah. Um, let's go for twelve. Okay. Um, yeah, this is. And this is when this one's for you because I was I was Gautier. Okay, but uh, this is you. But you've been Groundhog Daying this day for about a thousand loops. <laughs> Boy, okay. Uh, hello and welcome to everything to Guppy the podcast. Everything where to Guppy about- podcast where I have them. Gary, what's up? Uh, you don't usually interrupt me during the intros. I know. Um, can we do something else this time? What do you want? Yeah, can of course, man. Like the show's shake- fluid. What do you want to do? Let's shake up the format or something. Can we read uh, the 16th chapter in this book I'm reading? What What's the book? Huh? Oh, it's uh, Blood Meridian. Can we read the, the 16th chapter of Blood Meridian? I feel Inside, like... Or why, s- isn't that one of the like, chapters with like the really graphic murders of Native Americans? That's basically all of them, but I'm trying yeah. to get through it. Um, or we could we could watch... Um, do you want to watch one episode of the third season of Succession? That's about where I'm at. Gary Seam. Okay. So you see your, what had happened in the show. I was trying to get through some stuff because I was in Groundhog Day mode. In your understanding of what you would do if you were Groundhog Day, <laughs> I would watch Succession finally. <laughs> you get to Succession after a thousand days. Yeah, <laughs> I was. I was third season. I under <laughs> after like nine hundred and seventy-one days. <laughs> Three years seems about right for me to get to succession. Sure. For now. It's, boy, if I total. was trapped in a Groundhog, Groundhog Day loop, I'd really get caught up on TV and Cormac McCarthy novels. That was literally my first thought. I, <laughs> <laughs> I guess then since it's a thousand days, but I do think maybe I would do, you know, sleep for a few of them you know, early on. Sure. <laughs> like I'd probably, you know, you gotta be careful because you gotta put your little hand in mine. Yeah, I would. I'd do that though. All right, Gary, give me another um, number. Uh, ten. Okay, this one is for me. Uh, mm-hmm. just go ahead and start talking to me, and I'll be the character. Okay. Hey, hey, how's it going? Fucking shitty. Ah, oh, I'm Ever, sorry. Ev- how would you like it? If not only your entire childhood had been broadcast to the fucking world, but then when you're an adult and your fucking dad, his heart explodes, you're expected to keep infantilizing your past self, huh? That sounds rough. And you, you got to know that fucking Billy and Dolly are not doing jack shit to help keep the full fucking shit afloat. Yeah. Sometimes I'll call Billy up and be like, hey, you remember when you used to walk around all the time? Where would you go? And he'd be like, 
Jeffy, I'm busy. I'm a heart surgeon now. Yeah. Fucking sucks. Do, uh, how are your grandparents doing? They're ghosts. Uh, yeah, and who the, killed them? Th- Not me. No, I, I, well, you're Not wrong. me. Yeah. They're, they're behind you. I can see them too. What? Oh God. No, they're coming. Yeah, they're just watching. No. Oh, they're putting their hand through my heart, my chest and squeezing my heart. Like in the film, the Frighteners. <laughs> Oh, no. I'm Jeffy from Family Circus All Grown Up. Did you guess that already, Lista? No. You won the game! Scene. Scene. Did you have a final line you wanted to get in? No. Okay. I was just, I was in, in my mind's eye, I was just admiring the spectacle mm-hmm. of the, the ghost s- killing the, s- the grown-up Jeffy. The spectacle. Ooh. <laughs> don't, and scene. Don't, don't do that. Um, little bonus character there. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, uh, let's go to uh, number three. You did three. Three was Tucker. Two. Two? Oh, okay. You're one more job, Steve. Okay. Uh, you you got to talk to me to start this as well. Of I don't course. I just monologue. Uh, hey, uh, Steve. Uh, thank you for having this meeting with me. Uh, we're just talking about your... You've been having some issues with attendance uh, lately. You know, we here at, uh, at Microsoft, we really like... We want to get people in there every single day because we value your commitment and we value your contributions. Yeah, understood. I'll take care of it. Oh. Just one more. What? I'll take care of it, I said. There's just one more job I have to do. Is that a Bowie knife? It's a Jones knife. It changed its name because of the monkeys. Scene. Okay. <laughs> what um, the fuck was that? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, is that a bowie knife it's a jones knife it changed its name because of the monkeys <laughs> yeah it's a david bowie david uh, bowie, his name is david jones and he changed it because one of the monkeys is named david jones <laughs> so the knife changed its name <laughs> yeah because it's a bowie knife okay uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I mean, it perfectly makes sense. Yeah, I, no, it's, it's perfect. Um, yeah. Uh, it was good because I, I didn't know how to get out of that. Um, you give me number 10. Did 10. 10 was adult Give me Jeffy. number 9. <laughs> Did that. That's the host of Gautier today. Give, maybe we should have deleted them. Maybe I was wrong. <laughs> yeah, maybe we should method. have. I <laughs> have the numbers. Constantly update me how many uh, numbers are left. <laughs> we though. still have four, five, six, seven, eight. 13 and f- 13, 14, and 16. Okay, let's do 16. Fuck. <laughs> I was out of steam when I wrote this one, and I knew I would make myself uncomfortable when I had to say the name. So start a conversation with me. Okay. <clears throat> uh, what can I get you? You don't want to ask my name first? Uh, well, I usually I don't, but that's... Uh, hey, I'll be your waiter, Gary. Yeah, hi, uh, What's hi, your Gary. name? I don't want to say. Well, that's okay. As a waiter, I don't really need to know your name. It's but shit I do think that cunt. Shit cunt. <laughs> no, I don't like it, See, That's not a... Pro- <laughs> you started as a just, horrible band and became a, I just a man. Wrote, I just wrote shit cunt. I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't like saying that word. <laughs> why uh, Why uh, 16 in that scenario? Why not stop at 15? Because I thought it'd be funny. Gary, can uh, I have another uh, number? Yeah, uh, let's just, well, uh, 14? I'm trying to get rid of the teens because then I know the range I have left. Sure, uh, yeah. Gary, can you give me your take on worst scars guard? Oh, okay. Yeah. Hezo. <laughs> I'd like to be in your movie. Please put me in your movie. I'm, I'm sorry. I would What's... like to with my brothers. <laughs> I'm already, I have two scars guards in this movie. Uh, what is Ooh, your name? To... There's always run more room for Mr. Maximilian Skarsgård. <laughs> Max, it's, can I call you Max? You can call me Maximilian Skarsgård. Okay. Yeah. What, are, what are some characters you've played that I might know from film or television? I exclusively play corpses that oh. have been killed by the clown eat. <laughs> oh, so your your little bro- are you, is he your little brother or your older brother? <laughs> Ah, uh, he's my exact twin. Oh shit! That's why your face looks like that. Y- yeah. I I, I, I was just, just looking at you, thinking someone thinks this is handsome. 
I know it's weird. I got my mother's voice, and she also <laughs> thinks I am handsome. Yeah, your your brothers and father are actually pretty light on the accent most of the time. Very, very much so, but I have chosen <laughs> to intensify it. <laughs> yeah, and maybe move countries. Ah, uh, the uh, I am a traveler of the world. <laughs> yeah, maybe spend yeah. a lot of time in maybe Austria. I think I spent times all over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, and now I am in America, cowboy, and want to be in a movie. Sure. I mean, we do have a lot of corpses in this movie. Is, can you play a corpse that wasn't eaten by the clown? It. Yeah. Here, <laughs> let me try. Ah, my heart. <laughs> no, you still look like you've been eaten by a clown. Oh, those are from leftover makeups. And scene. Yeah, there Very we go. Some of your best work. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, and then 13? a commitment you often don't bring to character work. <laughs> that is 100% true. The voice just kind of took me. It's a fun voice. Yeah. Uh, 13. Fuck. <laughs> oh, it's cunt shit. Go ahead and start a conversation with me. Okay. <clears throat> uh, hi. Uh, what, uh, what kind of coffee do you like? No waiter scenes. Come on. Okay. No waiter <laughs> a, scenes. No, no transaction scenes. Come okay. on. Basic improv no 101. Okay, okay. Well, I didn't realize that. Okay. <laughs> okay I'm uh, sorry, Gary. That's yeah. that's a little inside improv is uh Yeah, I didn't no transaction seats. Okay, okay. Uh hey, do you uh do you know what time the bus is coming? When the bus is coming for us, I hope that it takes me to Gus. He's a donkey who kicks, place holders for sticks, and always says nice things about us. Hey, uh that is a pretty good limerick. To, um, that one came straight off the dome. I'm feeling real far from home. I wish that I hadn't embarked on this chat and pageant pageant mm-hmm. and was simply just dead in the loam. Oh, that's, that's bleak, man. Um, I've got the clinical depression ever since the start of recession. I'm feeling real glum. I feel pretty dumb. Why won't you, you just watch Succession? Episode of the third season of Succession. I, I got in uh, there nice and fast. I know Look, that was Limerick yeah. Lars. I did not work in the Lars aspect. <laughs> the, 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 uh, no, it's it's okay. I didn't ask the name. I don't start a lot of conversations with strangers by asking their name. That was a lot of Limericks that I came up with quite yeah, quickly. That was good. All right, we're going over. Good. I want to get through the rest of these though. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, uh, we have four, five, six, seven, and eight. Yeah. Yep. All right, Gary, you're John Wick's brother-in-law. Yeah. Um, why'd you let her die? Why I... did you let her die? <laughs> I'm gonna have to go start going on a, a vengeance quest right now. Very, I guess I'm back. This is a very aggressive energy to bring to John Wick <laughs> when you're his brother. Yeah, yeah, I can't uh, believe you let her die, John. I mean, she she had. Uh, you know, it's never specified, but it's strongly implied to be some kind of cancer. Yeah, uh, I know. She's my sister. So should I have... Uh, what did you want me to do? Did you want me to... Did you want me to go back in time and then get an inner space device, shrink down, and the two of us kill each cancer cell individually to save my wife? Because... Right now, I'm thinking about it, and that movie sounds so fucking good. That does pretty... So fucking good, man. I wasn't thinking about it, but now I am. Fuck. Uh, here, get in the chamber. Get in the chamber. Okay. And, and see. pull the lever. Oh, okay. yeah. I'm Gary, I'm so sorry. No, okay. no, no, that wasn't a good line. I was just going to. No, no, that's a classic. Also a classic improv thing is cutting, calling scene before someone finishes pulling the lever. Oh, okay. <laughs> the, uh, I'm learning so much. Um, four. Uh, four is you are, or no, I am the unsinkable Molly Brown. <laughs> Hey, you're, you, are you okay? You're just floating out there. You need help? <laughs> so, Gary, they teach whole classes on how to initiate improv scenes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this has been a really good demonstration. You know that I haven't taken those classes. I know you haven't, buddy. You know what? I, I'm going to throw this out here. I was thinking about this recently. Yeah. You oftentimes call me out for killing improv scenes. No. I'm going to say skill issue. You got. You just got to roll with these punches. I know. I'm, it I'm was a great. challenging improv partner. I, okay. Give it to me again, man. Yeah. Okay. Hey, are you doing okay? You're not drowning or anything, are you? Do you need help? 
No, I'm not drowning, and I'm very put out about it. Oh, uh, do you mind if I come out there and, and we can, I don't have to yell at you from the shore? Uh, by all means, come out in your little dinghy. Okay, dinghy, dinghy, dinghy. Hey, uh, you look a little bit familiar to me. That's right, I'm the famous stage actress. Molly Brown is played by, of course, Miss Kathy Bates. Mm. This is uh, my Kathy Bates voice. Okay. Um, and now you're just bobbing in the ocean. I hate it. Uh, I hate, I'm hate. i getting very nauseous and I can't drown the way that the man in the prophecy said I would. Would you like to get on my dinghy? I'll tell you this. If I get in that dinghy, that dinghy's never going to sink. But why do you think I want you in the dinghy? My dinghy insurance is through the roof. Well, you... Are you trying to, if you're trying to commit dinghy insurance fraud, I'm going to make that harder. Oh, no, I'm trying to make my insurance rates go down because my dinghy is unsinkable. I'm thinking okay. long term. Okay, but you know you still have to have dinghy insurance legally in order to operate the dinghy. Yeah, but it'll just be really cheap because it's an unsinkable dinghy. You th the savings will be really, oh, really Oh, do you big. have the app? Do you have the app on your phone? Yeah, here, but, Lemonade. What? Yeah. That's the name of the app I, the insurance company I use for my dinghy. Scene. It's done is, through an app. Is, <laughs> is, is this name of a real app? Yeah. I got that Liberty That's Mutual one, and my wife keeps yelling at me for not having it on. Uh, it used to be, uh, that was the insurance I had in my apartment. It's not my house insurance. House insurance is a whole different game. Lemonade? Uh, lemonade. Yeah. Um, I didn't realize it was unknown. Yeah, I mean, I'm just unknown to me. All right, we just got three of these left to go, Gary, and then you can uh, end the episode. Seven. Uh, okay, uh, this is another two-person one. Or no, okay. it's just one person one. Never mind. Okay, uh, you're a 1970s Atari guy whose games aren't doing well. Okay. All right. Uh, what do you got for me today, Steve? You know, we got we got Robotron going right now, like Gangbusters. We got uh, we got a lot of like hot things and we just we're just waiting to hear the next million dollar idea from you you know yeah um fuck okay here's the idea mm -hmm. it's a little bit conceptual mm -hmm. okay you ready watergate 2600 okay in this you play a cube and the cube can be wood stern or bean bag and they go through the watergate mm -hmm. hotel uh placing wire tap cubes Around different strategic locations. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, I don't know. I think I'm more worried by the how little you seem to know about Watergate. It's it is recent. Um, I've just been had my head in the game so much. Previous yep. to this, I was uh, developing. Uh, just what's the gameplay? What's the gameplay loop here? What are the what are the what are the monsters? What are the monsters that are gonna like kill you? <sighs> That's the thing is like they're they're all just different McGoverns. At this point, I I kind of ran out of time and I just have this little digitized McGovern. So you know McGovern, but you don't yeah. know Woodward <laughs> oh, and Bernstein. Word, Woodstein and, and Beanbag. Beanbag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I the, uh, of course I know McGovern. I'm an informed voter. McGovern, who Nixon defeated in 1972. Yeah. 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 You can see here I made a little digital McGovern. That's actually and, uh, that's actually a really good. <laughs> I mean, you understand yeah. that the entire disc is going to be this McGovern ASCII art, right? Yeah, it's it's. I thought that was good. I've been meaning to transfer out of games and into ASCII art. Yeah, like you know, we only have like four kilobytes of storage space on the disc, and this is, I think, two thousand characters. A, photo, a semi photorealistic picture <laughs> of McGovern. Um, yeah, no, I know. I, We're going to have to sell it. a second disc that just has a digitized version of a McGovern <laughs> speech on it. Yeah, you can just put that in right. But <laughs> I, too, would be okay at winning president. <laughs> Scene, uh, did you just say I would? Oh, <laughs> I, would I, I, too, would be okay at being president. president. <laughs> I think that's that McGovern's classic McGovern steez. line. <laughs> yeah, I don't know anything about McGovern other than he's probably better than Nixon. Probably, yeah. Um, uh, Gary, um, I would like to point well, you know, I've been criticizing your improv intros. Uh, come in, I'm your boss, come in and talk to me is another classic hack improv intro, so. 
I, I have no idea what that how I anyone's did. supposed to do that. That I did. No, I know. I'm just I'm saying that like every single thing that's intuitive is bad. Yes, exactly. The uh fuck, man. Um seven? That was seven. We have five and six oh, left. Uh six. Okay. Uh hey, Actually, I, I should hi. talk to you. Hey, okay. Uh, hey. Um Do you how do you feel about uh poison? I never really thought about it that much. Okay. Um, I don't, I'm sorry. You I'm know, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, I'll, I'll I'm just going to go just, uh, could oh. you, um, could you do me like a favor? For, is it poison related? It's not. No, sorry. I, I shouldn't have brought oh. the poison. I fucked up. I fucked up. I fucked up. I'm sorry. Fuck. Okay. Fuck, 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 fuck. What, what's the favor? Could you stand near the window for the next several minutes? Yes. Okay. Thump, 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 thump. Do not make eye contact with the window. Make eye contact with the window. I said that wrong. I fucked up that. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. It, Just like, can you stand with your back to the window? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, here I am. Okay. Um, just can you, and you can, you can, you can stay there for however long it takes me to, to, to go 600 feet and up several flights of stairs and then do some aiming. Um, yeah, I don't see why not. I'm really sorry. Oh, it, uh, it, I, don't, it, I, I actually, I think I'm just going to go home. Oh, d- nothing to apologize for, friend. Um, yeah, you, you seem are troubled. You, are you feeling suicidal? Um, because that would be no like, more than usual. Okay, because that would make my life. Um, that, that's stupid. I'm sorry. And make it easier for you. I mean, no, uh, life is a buffet of pleasures. Mm. Um, Not in my experience. But because yeah. I'm seen the shy assassin. Oh, <laughs> I couldn't have guessed that one. Uh, the uh, I didn't realize he was shy. <laughs> I guess I made it more <laughs> self-hating, but yeah, it's just uh, I, I baited out real will by saying life is a buffet of pleasures. Yeah. Um, the uh, and then finally five. Yeah, that would be uh, Gary. Can you give me the lusty stable boy? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh. Hello. Hi. What do we have here? Oh, uh, my name is uh, Jared Michelson, and I, uh, I I told my wife that I would ride a horse mm. before oh, I yes. turned forty, and she like made a little. <clears throat> and so this is a spite based stable interaction. Sure, sure. Would you? Uh, so the first thing is you have to get that saddle. Can you bend over and pick it up for me? Uh, yeah, I guess you didn't need to specify the bending over part. I was, uh, oh, yeah, uh, it's the most important part. Hello. Uh, well, 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 lucky wife. Oh, uh, well, uh, she doesn't feel that way, but, uh, thank you. That, uh, that actually feels really nice. Uh, you're wasted on her. Y- yeah. What do you, oh, wow. Um, does, so does your... Does your shirt like come ripped or do you um Oh, I got it ripped in a horse fight. We like to suds each other up and fight with bubbles. That Oh. Would you I was, like to try I, was it? I was about to say that sounds extremely manly, but uh the words you said made that not the case. It's not manly, but it is wet. Sure. And it does make your t-shirt wet and tear it up. Would you like to try it? You should God, your nipples bubble are fight so, a horse. Are both wet and perky somehow. If you bubble fight a horse, it will trust you more when you ride it. <laughs> like a Pokemon. Uh, <laughs> very similar. Here's some rare candy for you to give this delicious man. Scene! <laughs> She's winking and dripping. Oh, man, Gary, that's the closest any of them got to good. Aw, yay. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Will. Gary, if people... No, honestly, if I'm rating you, the worst scars guard was by far your best work. Okay, thank you. I appreciate Doing my best. I haven't had all the classes. Um, <laughs> it's good to know... It's interesting to know which ones are, are bad in terms of setups. Are, are you supposed to suggest less or more? You're supposed setup? to give a premise, basically. Uh, okay. But also, like, uh, in that last one, I fucked up. Typically, you're supposed to know the other person, so you don't have to go through the fucking introduction bits. Yeah. Yeah. The, I assume that anybody who would know the lusty farmhand or stable boy 
uh, would already be on board for all of his stuff if they knew him or they yeah. would avoid him. I mean, know? Gary, I got to tell you, you were halfway to seducing me before you started doing Pokemon <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, it's you have a horse fight, a bubble yeah, fight, fight with horse. fight with horse. Your idea yeah. of seducing Stable Boy talk was bubble fight with horse. <laughs> Uh, if people want to bubble fight with horse or Patreon, uh-huh. they can through giving it money and uh, at the patreon.com slash DuckFeedTV and tune in to DuckStream uh, December 6th, 7th, and 8th. And you can leave us a rating review on Apple Podcasts or Podcast Edit. Gary, I'm so sorry I started that very long bit so late in the podcast. Like no, this one okay. from uh, Kamalu, uh, left on Podcast Addict. Shout out to my father-in-law's wife's brother-in-law, who says he was in an improv group with Will in college. Will, do you remember a guy by the name of Tim? Great co- podcast hosted by two handsome gentlemen. Four stars. Uh, father-in-law's wife's brother-in-law. So that would be Mary's... S- hmm. Father-in-law's... Shit. I mean, obviously I know Tim. Of course I know Tim. Yeah. It'd be, uh, think it out. So it'd be, okay. it'd be like, to you, it'd be Olivia's father's wife's, uh, and then one of her sister's brothers or husbands. I, I, I followed none of that, Gary. I'm going to try it. Uh, okay. So okay. it's the brother. <laughs> Shout out to my father-in-law's wife's brother-in-law. Okay. So the brother-in-law. Okay. Mm-hmm. So Tim is married to Mary. And so this is one of Mary's siblings. And then their wife is married to the father of the spouse of this listener. Yes. Who do you, you're bringing outside knowledge in with this Mary person? Yeah. Yeah. Tim and Mary. Okay. They're, uh, okay. Wonderful people. I love them very much. Haven't seen them mm-hmm. in a long time. Miss them a lot. Yeah. Unless uh, it's a different yeah. Tim, in which case, fuck off. I don't know you. That'd be incredible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just like uh, somebody's just lying for clout. Yeah. What a yeah. weird clout. <laughs> An improv team with Will. Yeah. <laughs> you can't you can't buy that kind of clout. Uh, the crazy the monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> Correct amount of pity in that laugh. Yeah, I, I just, I can't. I don't think I've ever heard an improv name where I've been like, fuck yes. I was like in that Factory owns. Dinosaur once. They all top out at fine. <laughs> like, I don't think I don't think there's a, in the bounding Will box. Will someone I don't think give a, this skeleton an Nokia? Nokia. 